Hey, it's Ramsey Dewey over here in Shanghai, China. Welcome to another edition of Q&A with the coach. Today, our friend Hideki sends this question. He says, give relationship advice. Oh, we're that kind of channel now, I guess. All right. Give relationship advice. Hideki says, I don't know how to keep the conversation going with my girlfriend. And I'm an awkward and shy person. I don't know what to talk about or what to do. Give advice, please. Hmm. Hmm. So you have a girlfriend. You feel awkward and shy. You don't know what to say to her. You don't know what to do. Now, I got this question a few weeks ago. So Hideki, I hope I'm pronouncing that name correctly. Hopefully, you didn't break up with your girlfriend at this point because you had nothing to say to each other. Why is she your girlfriend? I'm genuinely interested in this. Why is she your girlfriend? I was having a conversation with my daughters. One is five years old, one is five years old, one is eight years old. And they brought up the subject of when people are attracted to each other, but for shallow reasons. We were watching a movie. What movie was that? It was an older film. Um one with Marilyn Monroe. Was it The Seven Year Itch? I think it's that one. But here's the plot synopsis. There's this, there's this guy. He's married. He has a kid. His wife and son go out of town for the summer. And immediately he starts thinking about cheating on his wife. And Marilyn Monroe, her character, moves in next door to him. And he starts giving her the googly eyes like, oh man, I want to get me some of that. And so he's having this internal conflict of, of wanting to chase after this beautiful woman who just moved in next door or to stay faithful to his wife and the mother of his child. And my daughters are looking at this and they're like, this guy's a jerk. And I'm like, yes, yes, he is. He is a bad man. And yeah, don't marry a guy like that. And they're trying to describe this man. Like, why, why does he like this woman? And I said, well, because she's pretty. And they said, well, shouldn't, shouldn't you like somebody for more than just that? And I said, well, yes, you should. But he's shallow. What's shallow? Said my small children. And I said, well, shallow is when you focus only on the outward appearance and you don't really know who that person is. Now, I'm not accusing you of being shallow, but I'm going to ask you, do you know who your girlfriend is, or do you just know what she looks like? Do you know who that person is? When we really know who a person is, that can be overwhelming, that can be frightening, that can be wonderful, depending on who that person is. And in today's society, a lot of young people jump into a relationship with people they don't even know. And they think, hey, let's, uh, let's move in together, let's live together, let's sleep together, let's act like we're married but without even knowing who that person is in the bed next to them. And the justification for this is that, well, by going through these acts, by doing these things, we will get to know each other. But man, I'm going to tell you, if you don't know who that person next to you is, at that point, what makes you think you're capable of that level of emotional intelligence? I would say, my friend, you have some work to do. Learning to express yourself is difficult. That is the reason I started this YouTube channel 14 years ago, to learn to express myself more fluently, more clearly.
It was very difficult as a younger man to express myself vocally, to have a normal conversation with other people, to look people in the eye and talk to them. And so I made a goal to make myself uncomfortable, put myself in these uncomfortable situations where I was forced to be in front of people, to talk to people, to look people in the eye. And it helped. It helped a lot. And one of those choices I made when YouTube started was, hey, there's, there's a platform. People will look at me. People will hear me. Let's do that. And it helped tremendously. But you know what else helps being able to talk? Having something to talk about. And life experience is the key for that. If you lack life experience, you're going to have a hard time talking about stuff. Unless, of course, you're asking questions. Now, there are all kinds of things to talk about. You can prattle off stories and information if you have stories and information. But from my experience, that's not what most women want to hear. They don't want to hear lectures from their boyfriends or their husbands. Questions, on the other hand. Even, and perhaps even especially a stupid person a person lacking in emotional intelligence, a person lacking in life experience, can and should ask questions. You want to get to know another person? Well, asking questions is one way to start that process. I say start because we're going to ask questions and we may get some very shallow answers at first, but that's just starting to dig, if you will. Do you love this person? You're a young man. You're probably thinking, well, yes, I love her. She's my girlfriend. Okay, fair enough. But do you love this person? And by love, keep in mind, love is a verb. It's an action word. The art of conversation, the gift of the gab, not everybody can do that. I mean, watch a YouTube video. Watch any YouTube video. Watch 10 random videos, and what are you going to see? You're going to see people who cannot string together coherent sentences piecing together pieces of sentences together in jump cuts, in fast-talking jump cuts to make it seem like they have some level of competency in speaking when they, in fact, do not. And we see this to such a degree that so many people have been conditioned to expect human speech sounding like that, which is... Weird, man. It makes me wonder what human language is going to sound like in ten years. Because the way we speak is very often a reflection of what we hear on the regular. So, a hundred years ago in the United States, for example, there were, there were a lot more accents. There were a lot more dialects very recognizable regional dialects. For example, you could hear somebody from a certain neighborhood in Boston and you could understand, hey, that person's from that neighborhood in Boston. You could hear somebody from Queens, New York, and be like, yeah, that person's from Queens. I recognize their accent, which is totally different than a Brooklyn accent or any other neighborhood of New York. Today, however, it's different because everybody talks like the folks on TV. Everybody talks like Hollywood. And you can hear this Hollywood, West Coast, California, television accent throughout the entire world. I had a Spanish professor in college. He was from Wales. 
yes, a Welsh man who got a doctorate's degree in Spanish and taught Spanish at my university. And he spoke like a Welshman, had a Welsh accent, very regional accent. I had a conversation with him after class one day. He was talking about his son, and he said his son, born and raised in Wales just like him, spoke like a news broadcaster from the BBC with an English accent, with that cultured English accent that you hear, you hear on television. And this was shocking and appalling to him, like, oh, what's the world coming to? And I thought about, the four, I thought about that for a minute and I realized, I realized this is, that's not really any different from what happened in America. We had all those diverse regional accents and dialects in the United States that have pretty much died out today, except for the very old surviving Americans out there who still speak that way. In very small towns, you can still hear this somewhat. For example, in my hometown, I grew up in a place called New Plymouth, Idaho. It had 800 people when I was born. I think the population's now something like 1,200 people, 30,000 cows. It's a farming town. There are ranchers, dairymen out there as well. And it's very common for people there to say words like wash, you know, like wash your hands, except they'll say wash. Did you wash your hands yet? Wash. And that's totally normal in small town Idaho. But you go to a major metropolitan area, you say wash your hands, people stare at you like you're an alien. Well, what the heck is wrong with you? Well, I was put near the ri- with a I was put near the creek, and I disorder- decided to wash my my hands in the water. <laughs> yeah, they speak a little bit different. Pert near, you ever hear that one? Pert near, it's short for pretty near, pretty near to, pretty close to, close to something. And they'll say things like "we was" instead of "we were." We was pert near the creek, the creek, the small stream, and we washed, we washed our hands in it, right? But um. Yeah, man, my family is British. So I'm a British national, born and raised in the U.S. So U.S., U.K., dual national. And this is part of the, this, this has a point. There's a relation to your question here. This made growing up and speaking to other people extremely difficult and awkward. Yeah, man, super, super weird. So, in this town where people are saying things like, we was down by the creek washing our clothes, and I'm saying things like, I'm I'm saying things as a kid like, oh, man, what did my mother say? Calling cockroaches black locks and northern English. I don't know if my northern English followers even recognize that word. Do you still say Blacklock up there in like Durham? And settee instead of couch or settle instead of sofa? Say things like vitamin instead of vitamin? Man, I said that yesterday. I was speaking to my children, my own children, about vitamins and minerals, and they're like, no, daddy, vitamins, like mommy says. (laughs) Like, vitamins, like daddy says. And they're like, no, vitamins. I said, well, that's the American pronunciation, but this is not America. This is China. Yeah, I live in China, in case you didn't know. So speaking to people was super awkward. I got beaten up. I got beaten up. I got teased. Man, I got hazed. I, I just... I got bullied. I got told to go back to my own country, where I came from, even though I was born and raised in the United States. Go back to your own country, English kid. And it got to the point I decided I just wasn't going to talk to people anymore. I wasn't going to say anything, because every time I opened up my mouth and said something different, or pronounced anything differently from anybody else, it was met with antagonism, or violence. So I shut the mouth. And I remember spending the better part of two years 
just not speaking to anyone at all. And when I did speak, mumbling, mm, mm, mumbling, because mumbling, while not the most comprehensive way of, of communicating your thoughts, didn't get me beaten up. And if you live your life like this, man, you're going to retard your development. Your linguistic development is going to be set back a lot. So I understand where you're coming from, not being able to, to fluidly communicate your thoughts and feelings and feel like you have nothing to say because you just don't have the experience of opening your mouth. Because you know what your mouth is made of? It's made of muscles. And your muscles have muscle memory. They remember the way that they move. And you've got to train those muscles in your mouth to move certain ways. So if you start to learn a foreign language, for example, if you're a native English speaker and you start to learn Spanish and you start trilling your R's, saying words like ferrocarril, which is railroad in Spanish, and you're not used to that, and you, your mouth is going to start getting sore. You're going to get sore like right around here if you are pronouncing the words the way that native Spanish speakers do because they move their mouths and their muscles very differently than English speakers do. So you haven't trained your muscles in your face, in your tongue, and certainly not in your heart and in your mind to move this particular way yet. So what you're asking me is not unlike people who haven't trained to fight saying, hey, Ramsey, Give me some quick advice on how to go win this fight against this professional cage fighter when I've never trained before. When the fact of the matter is that's not how it works. You've got to get the experience first. You've got to train first. So, one, you've got to know what to talk about, ask questions, have life experiences to draw upon. And two, practice the technical side of talking through talking. Pick up some books. Pick up some books and read them out loud and do that every day to practice moving your mouth and moving your throat. There are a lot of muscles here that need to be trained, right? Especially if you have a problem like stuttering or cluttering. Something I did just then. If you have some sort of speech impediment that's holding you back, it is imperative that you train your tongue, train your throat, train your breathing, train your diaphragm through repeated exercise, the repeated exercise of speaking. And how to speak to a girl? You need the experience of speaking to girls. Maybe you're afraid that your girlfriend is going to dump you because once you open your stupid mouth, you're going to say something dumb and she's going to realize how dumb you are and then leave like, oh, what was I doing? Man, I was so shallow. I just liked this guy because I thought he was hot and now I see how dumb he is. I'm out of here. Screw this. Maybe that's your fear. And if so, if so, that was a relationship built on a soundy foundation, my friend. You want to build a relationship on a rock, a solid foundation. You need to know who that person is, but more importantly, you need to know who you are. Are. Who are you, my friend? What manner of man are you? Are you the kind of person that you would want to be in a relationship with? Are you the kind of person that you want to have a conversation with? And if not, why? Why not? If there was a female version of you out there, Would you want to date that person? Would you want to marry that person? Would you want to raise children with that person? Would you want to have a conversation with that person? And if not, why not? And once you understand the why, fix that. Thanks for watching. Now get out there and train.